YouTubers, Electric Adventures here with another package in the mail. There he is here, it's not too big, from Japan, um, and um, very nicely packed, and little airbags. We have our contents here. Um, now, the main reason why I purchased this was because um, one of my watched alerts came up. Um, and um, and then I grabbed an, another couple of items to go along with it, which is what usually happens to me. So I don't have, don't have a distinct intention to um, to continually purchase something sometimes. Um, there are a couple of things I couldn't help myself. So the um, so it is very well wrapped. So bubble wrap, and then we've got. Um, covered in shrink wrap there. I'm just being very careful because we've got some original boxes here. It is quite tough shrink wrap. Okay, the first title of note is actually another B card, which is now technically up for trade. If everybody's up it, so um, for people who didn't see my um, previous video on this, on the original B card that I got, so this is the original incarnation of the solid state cards as used in the PC Engine and the Sega Master System. They're invented by Hudson Soft for the MSX machines, and this is the adapter that goes in the cartridge slot of the MSX. Which, I mean, I've got one, I haven't been able to use it so far. So there's another one, now I didn't purposely buy a second one of those. The main reason why I got that was to get my very first U card. So and it's Jet Set Willy. So as you can see it looks very similar to a PC Engine one. Um just that's labelled a B card. Um, and it has the artwork there. I've always liked the Hue cards, as far as I'm concerned. Actually, for a comparison, the first random Hue card that comes. So, we have. Sorry about that short interruption. I uh, got a phone call. So, I think I was about to show the difference in thickness. It's very hard to tell on the video and me trying to hold it keep it in focus and everything but take it from me the um, <coughs> the um, uh, a PC Engine one is just slightly thicker now obviously the card edges are at different ends but obviously if we reverse the other one we put the pins next to each other um, sorry about the focus There it is. You can see the um, MSX one probably has the same number of pins, but the spread is different. So the technology did change a little bit afterwards, and I'm sure the capacity of the um, um, of the PC Engine ones are a bit bigger. So I have a real title for my um, <coughs> for my card reader, and um, of coincidences, I actually won an auction. Where I got another one as well, so um, I don't know when that'll turn up. That'll probably take a week or so. So we're going to be able to actually, you know, have a go at a card game on an MSX machine. Now, along for the ride, we've got a couple of other titles. So shrink wrap. They do do a good job of the shrink wrapping. Okay, now the next one. Now the box is in perfect, isn't in perfect condition, but I didn't pay a lot of money for this one. Uh, but it's a game I actually really liked back in the day, and it's Raid on Bungling Bay. Also for the MSX from Sony, they came out in this size packaging. I've got, I do have one other real packaging. So there we go. There's the original price down there. They used to sell for so about forty nine dollars. In today's money, and this is a 16k MSX cartridge. 
right on Bungalow Bay. Poll of Interest did a video, I think, recently on the Commodore 64 version. Let's open him up. So he's a little dirty inside, but it is complete. So we have a manual and the cartridge. Like I just said, it's actually dirty inside. But other than that, it's actually the label's in really good condition. So we'll need to clean that up. So let's have a bit of a look at the manual. Sorry, really not having a lot of tr uh, luck today with dogs and phones. Um, anyway, let's just having a look at the manual. So just gives a few details there. Obviously, all in Japanese. Um, it did come out in English in Australia. Uh, but probably a lot easier to get a Japanese copy. It's not from, I mean, it is a complicated game, but I should be able to remember how to play it once we get into it. Um, but it's a bit of a strategy game, uh, multi-direction scrolling, uh, flying around with a helicopter and going and bombing bases. So that would be quite good fun to play. And we have one more. Um, and uh, I saw this one and I thought, well, that's not a bad price for a complete item. So it's elevator action. And I thought it was quite unusual because it's in quite a different case. So it's a cartridge game. It's actually got a um, clip here. So a press stud type thing and then blue foam inside. It doesn't have um, an instruction manual on the slip cover. And the cartridge is actually a clear one. So it's quite a different looking little cartridge. So there we go. There's the insides of the cartridge. This is by Tato. Used to like the um, arcade game of Elevator Action. Occasionally got to play it. It'll be interesting to see what this version is like. So, um, some more. There's some screenshots on the back. It's not looking too bad from those. And if it would come into focus, you know, it's a 256k ROM. It was also around $50 when it originally came out. Now it's for the MSX1. Um, so it'll be interesting to see um, what the game's like. All right, without further ado, we better go do some gameplays. Right, here we go with Elevator Action. So there doesn't seem to be any title screen music. So Tato Corporation 1985. Interesting little animated effect there. go with our guy, so we're at the elevator, so we've got to find the, um, we need to find the, um, oops, red doors, and, um, about getting shot. Escalators. Can we go down one more? There we go, finally I found one of the doors. Okay, we can jump to. Lucky I've got the MSX joystick plugged in. See, we, look, we definitely can't get up to that one. Oh, 
How do I go up the escalator? Over here. Yeah, gotta go on the red pad. Ah, now, okay, so we've got to stand on the red pad here. And we go in. And we've got our first door. Yay! Worked it out. Didn't see the red pads there. So we're gonna stand here, press down. That makes more sense. Have to spend some time in there getting the items. Ooh, that was close. So now we're down to the next set of elevators, so we need to. in a bad game. It's quite hard because the, um, the spy guys. Oh, got me. Oh, there we go. Game over. Well, that's not bad a game at all. I'll definitely be playing that um, some more. Oh, let's try the next one. Right, here we go with Raid on Bungling Bay. Got an interesting little title screen here. Helicopter gets closer in. It's not too bad. I mean, let me remember, remember this is only a 16k cartridge too. So, not bad. Alright, let's give it a go. Uh, one or two players. that button to get going. Let's go that way, does it? No. Well that shows us where the ship is there, right? Okay. So nine bombs, I apologize if my dogs are going to be a pain. Oops. Oh. Boats shoot at you. So, we need to do those. so damage is 48. Okay, now we need to go and find structures and get rid of them. I'm not sure whether you have a radar or not. I can't remember. And yes, it's using jerky 8 pixel scrolling. Speed. Now here's one of the. Oh, I drop a bomb. So I need to stop over a target and then you can bomb it, I think. Ship and land, and I think I get repaired at the same time. Oops. Oops. Get carried away there. Oops. Keep on pressing the wrong direction. Just press 
button once to land, we get more bombs and we get repaired. Press the button to take off again. And let's go down to where we were. There's another one we missed before. There we go, down the big base. There you go, it's a bit of a strategy game. Um, I can't remember whether you can get a, uh, a map up, so there's another one. Yeah, and the enemy is constantly trying to improve their um, defences too. again and we need to go back to so yes yeah, so if the jets go and attack your home ship you need to go and defend it so we'll place it. you sort of got to remember by the landmarks that you go past and the enemy will actually build new defences while you're busy off the fueling, so it can actually take quite a while to finish your level. I'm dropping all my bombs. Okay, we're out of bombs, we need to go back and defend our ship. There you go, so the game's actually got quite a lot quite a lot to it. And it's a good fun game, so you can play it for ages. Um, I'm not sure if you can get a radar up and I think there might even be a key you can press to do that. Um, just trying to try and press the function keys just to see. Mm, mm, maybe you're not maybe you just gotta do it by memory. Yeah, anyway, very good game. Okay, let's try the next game. Right, after a little bit of mucking around, um, I can't seem to get this to work in my MSX2, so the, oh this is the card adapter by the way, for Jet Set Willy, um, and then you load it up and it comes up with this screen. No instructions, nothing, it just comes up with a screen like this, you don't know what to do, but if you press a button on the joystick, we're straight into the game. And it's, um, pretty much the same as the Spectrum version, uh, except it's using a sprite as the main character so you don't get a, any colour clash there. And by the looks of it, you get a, quite a large amount of um, lives. Um, I can't remember. I haven't played 
much it's going to be for so long, I don't know where everything is. Okay, we can't get to the bedroom until we um, collect some more objects, I think. This is one of those things where the music could probably send you mad if you're not careful. Oops, I died. Yes, we do actually have all of those lives. Which, as far as Jet Set Willy, is actually probably a very good thing. Because it is an extremely hard game. Okay, let's see what we've got down here. We'll just go and look at a couple more rooms. So as you can see, it is Jet Set Willy. It's pretty much the same game as what you can load off tape. Um, except it's being a bit more generous about the lives. Now I'll turn into a flying pig in the screen. This is one of our nightmare levels. Whoops. Ow. Close. Tits it really can be an extremely frustrating game. We've um, almost pixel perfect jumps and um, things required. I don't think you can do levels, we've got to do in between. Actually, I just saw some colour clash. That's interesting. Ah. So what you've got to do, you've got to zigzag back and forth from those and go and get those ones. Just to get that one little beer mug. So you've got to figure out on every single screen how to um, manoeuvre your way and get there. And this one, yeah, I'm sure the, um, the tape-based one does not have as much colour clash as this one seems to. Yeah, look, see, we have colour clash there. So this is a pure character based one. Ah, that was silly. <laughs> yeah, can we go in the water? No. Might even be some bugs there. We landed halfway in the wall. Nah. And it's done again. But there we go. I've got a card game and a card reader and it works. So um, if anybody's interested in the other card reader that I don't have spare, I'll test it to double make sure it's okay. But um, that's available for trade. Alright, thank you for watching and I'll catch you all next time.